Okay, thank you very much. Um, we will now go to uh, discussion on, uh, on the various uh, papers and the topics uh, addressed. So, are there any questions? I suggest you the, the first question from uh, Professor De Miguel to close the connection as soon as possible. Oh, you will be part of the discussion? No, first for his presentation and then we can do the question for the Professor De Miguel. Okay, do you have a question for us? No, no, no. Um, He's just suggesting that he to him. Okay, so pose a question. Do you have any questions for him? Yes, go ahead. Uh, I uh, would like to ask about the, actually a kind of uh, consideration of all the aspects here. Because uh, you describe that uh, actually the mechanical failure which is caused by the human interaction is a important part and you show the example. But I believe equally important part is a human uh, interaction cause data failure. And for instance, uh, anonymous data is aggregating in control system or for instance when uh, a particular input data is incorrect in the context and the system accepts it and then it uh, causes uh, how to say kind of chain problems in the system. I don't know if you have studied it or for instance why is it just focusing so much on the mechanical part? This would be a kind of question. Well, I think that's a great question. I, I, I appreciate this question. Um, so in this particular study, uh, we are mostly focusing on the machinery flows. But in, in other studies, we have recent publications in ASME in coming um, in the 2018 uh, August. So we focus also a lot of uh, purely uh, human-induced failures um, that are caused because of uh, cognitive and physical aspects of, of, of failures. Um, it's not presented in the study, but yes, we do focus on that part, and I agree, I agree with you in your comments. Thank you. So I have a question for you uh, relating to this, because um, you, you, I think you have a very strong point to try to address this in the early stage of uh, design processes, but um, I haven't seen um, a sort of a uh, let's say implementation of the context and also of the awareness of uh, either a human or a system. Uh, can you maybe elaborate on that, if, if that is possible in your current approach? Um, well, the early design aspect in here, what we try to uh, present uh, it's the digital human modeling tools. So the digital human modeling tools um, allow us to um, recreate um, lots of different design scenarios or alternative ideas without the need of actual physical prototyping or sometimes without the need of human subject data collection. Um, so that was kind of the emphasis in, this, in, in the scope of this um, paper using these computational human early in the design to discover uh, basically unseen problems uh, without going through um, full production or, or prototyping process. I don't know if it is clear. Yeah, I understand your, your approach within, within the reason of uh, having not huge physical prototypes uh, present and of course with the current technologies uh, you know, with, with uh, goggles or what you have, that's fine. But uh, what I was referring to is that in the scenarios, um, which, which is a, it's just an approach of uh, trying to recreate some kind of reality in a virtual space, um, how, how much of that can you, uh, uh, let's say, implement in relation to real world contexts and possible uh, failure within those contexts? Um, yeah, that's a good point. So. One of the biggest limitations in these virtual tools or more augmented tools is basically um, the feedback, environmental feedback. So we can't really, I mean, there, there's, 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 there's a lot of work in, in this area, but so far it's really hard to recreate, for example, interactions that require tactility 
I like kind of touch and feel. But on the other hand, uh, one big advantage of virtual reality tools is recreating the vision, building the what the user or what the pilot or what the driver can see, right? The vision-based problems are, are more um, um, probable to work on that other uh, failures that require human action or feeling. So the stimuli and how the feedback is a really big challenge in this area. Okay. Yes, there's one more question. Just a comment on, mm -hmm. on your comment. Yeah, yeah. That data is very important. I I can tell you that the, um, the Air France crash over the Atlantic was caused by because the airspeed was faulty and then the pilots misunderstood the data. Yes. So was that a um, technical failure, human failure, or was combination? Yeah, so, so this yeah, is, yeah, is yeah. very, very important. But the combination is, 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 is very good, but what I'm referring to is trying to find the you know the context where that plane was, and 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 you know that that is an inclusive. You, you never know if that same problem will occur in another context. It was the same pilot. It's impossible. So you know that human factor in that sense is completely obfuscated. You don't know what's going to happen with all the people on board with the same plane. So this predictiveness, how far can you go? But we also see it, uh, or we can uh, interestingly, it's just a kind of problems now, you know. But we can also see it that, uh, for instance, when we want to recognize or prevent even this is a failure in the emergent process, in uh, why they are emerging, actually certain patterns may have, and this is exactly what we are talking about here. That's what we are addressing. That Excellent. Failure uh, recognition could be had, for instance, with this paid, paid pattern analysis or something like this. Yeah, but it's it's always recreation on uh, on the accident, right? So the accident of failure. Which can be used next time. Yes. Yeah, but that's it. But you want to know in advance what's going to possibly going to happen. Yeah. Right. This is what we want to know. Because you cannot predict it whatsoever. You can have a, a look at your patterns and, and you can sort of uh, make an idea on that it might be really possible going to happen, it but it's not really going to happen in the same way. So then you need that pattern again to be included. So it's a learning system over time. And so it's really always behind the A-ball. Is that correct? Well, that, that, that could be, but in the, in the case of the example that you gave here, France, um, that's a very complex case. Uh, the stimuli that the pilot gets, uh, I mean, there are thousands of different questions in there. Uh, I don't know if, if it is a human-machine interaction problem or it's more like um, the pilot doesn't really know what's going on and provide a decision without really having the um, correct uh, stimuli. Yeah, but I, I remember there was this uh, famous uh, story an, uh, an almost accident in New York City on, uh, with an airplane as well, trying to land on... on, on Order. Eh? Order. Yeah. Order. Order. Yeah. Order. yeah, exactly. But the pilot switched off everything and he was flying it by hand. So this is what I think the most uh, dominant of everything. I tried to explain it in my talk, that we have so much capacity and capability within our human um, you know, body, embodiment, that, that it's almost uh, impossible for me to create and recreate anything in the virtual. I mean, it's helpful, understandably, and I work a lot with VR, but it, it never gave me the right, um, let's say, <laughs> the right answers for the questions that I'm trying to solve. Um, the, reason, the reason could be the fidelity of the environment. <coughs> of course, but it's always about fidelity. And that this is this is some some kind of a paradoxical thing because we're running around always in the same circles. And I, I, I grant it, you need research on that. I mean, I'm not questioning that, and, and it's wonderful. But but still, I mean, what do we really want? What do, what do you fairly fairly approve? I mean that that's that's totally true. But on the other hand, if you look at how the aircraft simulators, training simulators. 
significantly change the um, basically air aviation business. Yeah. I mean, if you want to train a pilot um, in an actual airplane, always, um, that's extremely, extremely slow process and extremely costly, especially if you think about military pilots, that's unbelievably costly. Yeah. So there, there is a limit definitely in, in, in the realm of creating the reality. But on the other hand, these simulation tools, um, they actually extreme cost factors. They reduce the cost and you can have uh, ways of simulating different dangerous situation without putting the human beings in danger. But on the other hand, I agree, uh, it's impossible you know, to think about all the possible scenarios and create all the possible scenarios. There's definitely a limitation there. Yeah, but what I was noting down while you were uh, speaking uh, was that this could be a, a great approach also for learning in the educational system to, to have, let's say, for example, vocational training on the premises and have, have this system working with students. Because I know that they will create ideas and products uh, out of uh, sheer luck. And then, you know, if you would have a system like yours, they could try and test that product and see where the failure is going to happen. Virtually, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there is a lot of value, I agree, in the training and, and maybe capturing autonomously, like, yeah. um, the, the way that they generate different ideas. I, I definitely agree with that. And are you, this is a private question, but are, I mean, are you going to be an ASME? Uh, yeah, I will. I will be. Okay. Are there any more questions from the audience on this topic? Okay, then uh, I would like to thank you um, for your presentation and your appearance, although we didn't see you all much. Yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity. I really appreciate your time and your comments. Um, Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank okay. you. All right, so we will continue this uh, discussion then uh, amongst us in the real. Um, we have heard five papers, five presentations. And uh, are, there, are there any questions? Thank you very much.
I see. Take these features and the basic rules and uh, also basic rules and also add several other rules. Basically, it can be used uh, to produce various different initial concept design of products. I, I don't uh, use this pro, uh, program in this software to produce real MVU design, but for basically for just uh, for some uh, common uh, for some common issue. And basically, basic actually this is the uh, this is the uh, problem to to design. You need specific detailed information. For, for specific design consequences. But, but they don't, they your question not. was more on implementation, right? Implementation. So, so did you implement implement your model into a real case? Did you system. actually got something out of the, the, it? Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Because if you... And, I mean, can you explain I, the case? Because maybe? it is... Uh, we, we, have, we have produced more than 20 examples, design examples, but uh, only produce like less the picture shows very, very initial concept design, not detailed concept design. Okay. Because very detailed knowledge spec are required for specific design aspects. Okay, but is it an actually functional? It's just to, no. to, just to, to, uh, to Validate to the algorithm are okay for the design in general. Very simple, very simple to produce very simple concept is non detail concept. Okay. Because we need more. Still, no, just uh, no, please as go a ahead. command. Well, uh, what we are what we are working for from conceptual design. Okay, it's in the early stage. I'm working exactly in the same area. But without an implementation, you cannot say anything that it is okay to have the examples just on the paper. We are, I, I can understand you very well, because this is the most difficult part in our area. Uh, we have everything, uh, the methodology, everything on the paper, on the computer. Uh, we can find many examples uh, on that environment. But why we are starting from early conceptual design just to convert it to, into a real physical design at the end. So this is our purpose. Yeah, uh, yeah basically what you're saying, uh, on, on the one hand, the biology will end up with a baby, and but did you end up with a bike? Yes. This is that, basically that is what she's asking. Purpose. The bike is so not a bike can right. find some For sure we have a baby. Very simple yeah. examples, well, just to start, because I'm working at the laboratory level examples, really, I mean, with very limited budgets, no budgets even. But just uh, to show the applicability of your methodology in, into even into some very simple, real physical uh, artifacts, uh, artifacts, something like that. Actually, so this is what I would I, like to. Actually, make actually this is the part of part of my work: how to uh, produce a complex information from very simple initial information. Actually, I use other. Uh, this is by cell communication. But how how this process can work? How this communication can work? What's the what's the limit? What's the necessary information to start a, a design? That's very important. This is the, my other the, my other research by so called something like the from a DNA to mRNA to protein. This is this process. This is a Something like the form. Uh, uh, actually, this is uh, actually this is my part of the research. From very limited information, something like the DNA genes, and uh, to produce to transform this, transcription this to and something like message RNA, and this message RNA can be per, can be divided into produce something like proteins only use very limited uh, 
material, unique, something like animals. Thank you. Thank you. Like um, are there some other questions still in the in the audience to the other papers, maybe? Yes, go ahead. I have a question for uh, the first paper of uh, Lucien, Professor. Uh, you want you you say that you want to make three uh, D printing of packaging, but how will you be? Uh, so the texture will be completely different. Uh, uh, no. No. Uh, we we print uh, the molds by by three D printing. The reason is is this, is that uh, you change firmly uh, with with all, uh, to print uh, packaging uh, with filament with pet filament, but uh, for us it's not the same. The properties is uh, very different. The, the normative too is is very uh, very short. Uh, and for us, <coughs> it's better uh, print the mold with with sheet, uh, plastic sheet, or for example, PLA plastic sheet, than now or BioPET, for example. Mm -hmm. So you can I basically think. relatively fast <coughs> prototype and get a, a first uh, idea about the products yeah. because of your rapid prototyping approach. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. Yeah, in, yeah. Area, uh, in the, in the area, yes. Okay. Right, so it's basically trying to get uh, faster, speedier results in order to get more feedback and see if the packaging would, you know, fulfill the needs. Okay. Any more, any more questions on on topics? We can discuss also during tea because yeah. we're going to have something like that now. Okay. Thank you for your uh, attention and uh, being here. Okay. Bye.